So just a little bit ago, I was looking at some videos that we put out earlier today and something that I noticed was that, man, I was looking rough. Uh, my hair was looking all messy. I needed to shave. Uh, I was just not team keep it clean whatsoever. Uh, so what I did was went and grabbed my clippers, gave myself a little lazy lineup. Definitely wasn't my best work. I did not put my best effort into it. I shaved. I just put myself together to be halfway decent, but I could have done a much better job if I would have just put, a, put in a little more work. And that's the same thing with this Stephen A. Smith take. It's definitely not his best work. He could have done a much better job if he just put in a little more effort and it was lazy. Going forward, though, going you're, forward, you're taking Joe Burrow I'm saying because over Lamar Jackson. Because, only because of this one position. I have been a stickler for many, many years. I know how electrifying Lamar Jackson is. Right. But I've been a stickler for years about when you play the quarterback position, I have to believe in your ability to throw the football consistently. I'm not thinking first, playmaking. Okay. Think, first, okay. first, you have to show me that consistently you can be accurate in throwing the football. That is my criteria for the quarterback position that I've been consistent about throughout my career on television. I'm very, very big on that, and that is the lone question I've had about Lamar Jackson. He was the leader of Russia last yesterday with 86 yards and something like that. Russia. They had nobody else running the football for them. He was sacked five times. He was under pressure. I get that. I love that touchdown pass to Hollywood Brown. I get it. But consistently, watch them throw the football. Joe Burrow just appears to be on another level. I, I, you know what? I, but it's Lamar Jackson. It's Lamar Jackson because we're talking about Lamar Jackson like he's a finished product. I mean, we're talking about Lamar Jackson like Joe Burrow's not older than he is. Mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson already has an MVP. Lamar Jackson isn't playing with the Jamar Chases. Lamar Jackson isn't playing with the Joe Mixes. Right now, all of his running backs are my age. All of his running backs were on teams and cut and released. That's why he's the leading rusher. That's why he has to go for 500 yards in prime time to get this team a win. Lamar Jackson is playing at such a high level right now. I think that we are ignoring it because we've seen it before, right? We saw him win the MVP. We saw him carry a team. Lamar Jackson is on pace to again give us something we've never seen, and y'all act like y'all act like it's not happening. Stephen A, I got some words for you again, my friend, and of course, they are all clean. Yeah, this feels like a dream, and you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens, and you know just So YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video, and Stephen A. Smith, he's back at it again. And this time, he said that he would take Joe Burrow over Lamar Jackson. But see, that, I have no problem with him saying that because everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Which QB you would take over the other one doesn't matter to me. That's fine. It is what it is. But where I question Stephen A. Smith is where he questions Lamar Jackson's accuracy. Or in his words, his inaccuracy. The fact that he's not an accurate passer and I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why we are still stuck on that and I, I can't even say that Stephen A. Smith was a prisoner of the moment for the game yesterday because if you listen to him and go watch the clip over again you can tell you can just tell that Stephen A. Smith did not watch one ounce of this game not one ounce but before we get into it, I got to give a huge shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all so much. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash ingravenvids. And if you don't want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, then you ain't got to go to patreon.com slash ingravenvids. But still, whether you're a patron or not, you got my love. You got it. It's all yours. But anyway, uh, back to Stephen A. Smith. He talked about how right now he would take Joe Burrow over Lamar Jackson because Joe Burrow is just on another level and Joe Burrow is just uh, such an accurate passer of the football. He's on another level from Lamar Jackson when it comes to passing the football. And it, it's, it's crazy how with Stephen A. Smith, like Lamar Jackson, like, and you know he, he's been waiting on a game like this. And this wasn't even Lamar Jackson's worst game. It was his worst overall beatdown as a starting quarterback. But it wasn't his worst game as a quarterback. But when you do a Stephen A. Smith and you just you only look at the number and that's it. You only look at the numbers. You say, my Lamar Jackson was 15 for 31 Ugh, under 50 <laughs> percent. Yuck, he's so inaccurate. Ugh, gross. Uh, 257 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. And he got sacked five times. <laughs> wow. But when, when you just look at those numbers. It'll make you think, oh my goodness, he was just off. He completed less than half of his passes. Wow, he's so inaccurate. I still have questions about his accuracy. And this is how you can tell Stephen A. did not watch 1% of that game. He mentioned, again, he talked about what stats show. He said, oh, Lamar Jackson had like 88 rushing yards. Uh, and, and, and oh, that pass that he threw to, to Hollywood Brown was nice. That's, that's highlights talking right there. He didn't watch one ounce of the game. 
But he he talked about how oh yeah yeah and and, and all his other running backs they ain't have any running yards and and Lamar yeah yeah he was, he might have been under pressure but 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 no but he's inaccurate. If a a quarterback is always under pressure, what do you expect them to do? And again, Lamar yesterday in yesterday's game there wasn't an accuracy issue, there was a. <laughs> A Bengals issue, a Bengals defensive line issue that became an issue for the Ravens offensive line, which has been an issue. And that created this even bigger issue that we saw throughout the game. And Lamar Jackson, a lot of times yesterday, he was holding the ball, holding, holding, holding. A couple of times he ran into sacks. A lot of other times he just had a lot of pressure and he got sacked. And it, it was just a, a very rough game. But yesterday was not one of those games where his accuracy was in question at all, at least not in my opinion. I, I did not see any throws where it was like, oh, man, Lamar, who are you throwing that to? Yuck. And, or at least none, none of those throws to where he had a clean pocket and he threw it and it was like, whoa, who was that intended for? Like, what is going on? See, this is the problem with a lot of media. Again, like my guy, um, Strong Opinion Sports, said, Media guys aren't football guys. It, it, it doesn't always mix. And Stephen A. Smith, this is a clear example of him being a media guy, but not a football guy. We know he, he specializes in NBA. That's his bread and butter. But hey, you work for ESPN, so you got to cover a lot of stuff. So I respect him for continuing to go at NFL, but I, I, don't, I really just don't think that's his specialty. And again... You're an ESPN commentator, broadcaster, whatever, and it's hard because you almost have to be a master of none because there's so many games that happen every single week, so many games, and you can't sit there and watch every single game. That's like impossible, and even if you sat there and literally watched every single game, you might drive yourself crazy. That's a lot of football. That's a whole lot of football, but even if it's, even if it's condensed, but with, with when, when, when you come on the air, when you come on the national media, this, this is how narratives get created. Narratives get created by media guys who come on air and they just, they, they just say anything without doing research, without really watching any of these players who they talking about play, by just watching the stat sheet. They, they, they just spit out anything and then this is how narratives are created and how they get just... They continue because they'll spit this out and then fans and people who watch these shows, they'll take it. They'll take it in because they're seeing it on a daily basis. They're hearing it on a daily basis. So it's being repeated in their mind is being repeated from what they see on TV. And they're like, whoa, whoa, OK, it is right. Since the guy on TV said it and he's been on TV for a long time, he's had plenty of jobs on TV and he keeps getting more jobs on TV. Then that makes it right, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Anybody who still had questions as for, for Lamar Jackson as a passer this year, those questions have all been answered. Anybody who had questions for Lamar Jackson as a quarterback this year, those questions have all been answered. And not even just one, because if it was just one game, I could give you that. But it's been several games where he has shown you over and over and over and over again, he's just fine as a quarterback. He's just fine as a passer. He can come back from being down. He can be come back from being down multiple scores. So with it just it doesn't make any sense when they still try to push these same narratives. Now, shout out to Ryan Clark. My my favorite part of that whole thing was what he said. He, he said, "Man, these these running backs that Ravens got." He said, they're my age. They are my age. And he continued to show why Lamar Jackson is so valuable to these Baltimore Ravens. And why he deserves, in my opinion, a blank check. A blank check. Because this team would not be this team without a Lamar Jackson. My guy JT, I was talking to him earlier. He said he thinks this team will be 2-5 and five without Lamar Jackson, with those wins coming against the Chargers and the Broncos. And I, 
I don't know. I, I could I could say maybe even one in maybe even one in six. Because this guy has just it, it's crazy. And again, he's not the only person that's putting in work. It takes a team effort. But the amount of work that this guy puts in, that's what Ryan Clark was highlighting. That's why he brought up the running backs. Because they, they all cast offs. They all guys that got cut from other teams or didn't get signed by other teams. And hey, now they Ravens. And of course it is due to the situation with the J.K. Dobbins and the Gus Edwards, which is an extremely unfortunate situation. But that's what it is for the Ravens right now. So the fact that the running game just has not been anything special, but the Ravens have still been getting it done. They're sitting at 5-2, and two, and we've seen what Lamar been doing. Again, he, he, he's shown us. Give that man a blank check. That's probably what the holdup is right now. That, that's probably what the only holdup is right now with his contract extension. Lamar got a blank check. From Eric DaCosta, and he's like, man, how, what, where should I start at? Should, what should we do? Should I go to 600 mil? Should I go to 700 mil? Like, what should I do? Because he deserves it all, man. He deserves it all. From the moment that he became the Ravens starter, his team has not been the same. In a good way. And then it's crazy, too, because you see, whenever the Ravens lose in the regular season, actually, whenever the Ravens lose, a lot of fans, they flip out. They go crazy because they're not used to it. It doesn't happen very often. His rookie season, he lost one game in the regular season against the Chiefs and then one game in the playoffs. Well, I mean, obviously, playoffs are one and done, and that was against the Chargers. His sophomore season, he lost two games, one against the Chiefs again, <laughs> uh, and then another one against the Browns in the regular season, and then in the playoffs, they lost to uh, the Titans, got demolished. And then the following season, what the hell much did they lose? Five games last year. Well, he only lost four games because one of those games he wasn't a starter. One was to the Steelers. One was to the Patriots. One was to the Chiefs. And the, four, oh, the fourth one was to the Titans <laughs> in overtime. And then they lost in the playoffs uh, to they they did win the first game, but they lost in the playoffs to the Bills. The seventeen to three, I think. So my point when I say that it, it's crazy that every single loss on Lamar Jackson's record, and then of course this year with the Raiders and the team yesterday. Wow, the Bengals. I couldn't remember for a second. But it's crazy that every single Lamar Jackson loss you can remember off the top of your head, just like that. You can remember off the top of your head because it happens so far and few. And it's not a frequent thing. So Lamar Jackson has spoiled this Ravens fan base. Spoiled them. To where, like I said, when, when, when Lamar Jackson and the Ravens lose, a lot of fans go crazy. But when Lamar Jackson and the Ravens lose, the media is like, man, we've been waiting on these guys to lose for so long. Man, what took you so long? Come on, Ravens, why don't y'all lose more often so we can get on Lamar Jackson? We're going to talk about how bad he is, as he's inaccurate, he can't play quarterback, he's a running back, he's this, he's that, he's everything except the quarterback. And then insert Stephen A. Smith with stuff like this. Again, this note, nothing against Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, nice. He did his thing. And again, like I said earlier, Stephen A. Smith, if he really believes that, if he's taking Joe Burrow over Lamar Jackson... No problem with that, but to, to throw the narrative in there for accuracy, it's like, because he was like, no, 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 I'm not talking about uh, how electrifying of a player you are. I'm not talking about playmaking. I'm talking about accuracy. <laughs> no, accuracy is not a question with Lamar Jackson anymore. And it's, I mean, it should have never been. I think the only reason it was, it became a question was because of media. Media spewing that stuff out there continuously. And they still spewing it out there. A lot of them are. Like Stephen A., and he's one of the more notable names. So that's why the, these narratives will continue. But hopefully one day Stephen A. will come to his Stephen A. senses. But until then, it is what it is. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.